You're listening to Short Inspirations from Ralph. Floors and Ceilings, Part 5. The fifth thing that is, can be your friend when it comes to predictability is this thing called commitment. A number of years ago there was a survey done in the States of 600 married couples who had been together for a a long time and they basically asked them what was the secret to their longevity why were they together for such a long time and three things kept popping up uh, kept coming out that were consistent right across these survey couples and they all start with C the first one was communication there was great transparency between them and they always communicated really well even through rough times. The second one was they had a Christ-centered marriage. In other words they the third strand of their marriage their relationship was the Lord Jesus Christ. He was the Lord of everything in their lives. They followed him. The third thing was yes you guessed it commitment commitment we need to be predictable when it comes to our commitment which is not a popular word these days we live in an age of instantism where things are done quickly we pace up and down and patiently in front of the microwave oven so don't be just a good starter and then fade off when the going gets a bit rougher. I remember seeing a movie some years ago and it was around the life of King Arthur and his knight, uh, Sir Lancelot, who was played by in this movie by uh, Richard Gere and the movie was called The First Knight and I saw a clip where he was going around from village to village and he was an expert swordsman so he would make his living, his money, out of tempting people to get into a sword fight with him. It wasn't to death or anything, it was just the skills of sword fighting. And he would usually end up taking their sword off them. And in this clip that I saw, a giant of a man challenged him. And he was very strong, very good with his sword. But after a, a, quite a fight... Uh, Sir Lancelot removed his sword and he was amazed. He said, how did you do that? I want to know. So Lancelot gives him a list of uh, clues as to what to do, but the last one stuck with me. It said, you must be willing to die for the cause. You must be willing to die for the cause. And the giant guy, swordsman, was silent after that because he had to make up his mind would he commit to this would he go all the way and when it comes to our lives we're not talking about dying naturally for the cause although some people do in the world but we're talking about laying down your life for a cause that's greater than you and in the survey we talked about it was their marriage but when we're talking about the uh, floor of your life it's and the predictability that it is be a committed person it's how we finish that counts the sixth area where predictability is your friend is your word it says in James to let your yes be yes and your no be no let's not let our yes be uh, maybe and your no be oh, I'm not sure let's see We don't have to be rude to people and go nah to them or whatever because wisdom is required. But people need to know where you are on matters. Don't be afraid to let your yes be yes and your no be no. And I believe we should be old fashioned enough that our word is better than a signed contract. The seventh one is this thing called vision. Know what your life is about. 
know where you are going. Don't be easily swayed off course when it comes to the things that really matter. And we are put on earth for a purpose. We have this thing called destiny, this thing called vision, even from a young child. Don't be easily discouraged. Be the kind of person where there's a sense of purpose and direction about you. And I'm not saying you need to be the top of the world in, in a whole lot of areas or disciplines. It may be in small areas. But be a person who knows where you're going. God bless you today.